Hello, hello. I hope you are doing fine. Welcome and thanks for clicking here. So in this lesson, we're gonna do a doll's house to one only and we're analyzing the character traits of three people. That is Nora, Nils Krogstad and Dr. Ram. I want you to watch this video up to the end because it's gonna help you in answering your exact question. So, so what I want you to do, have a copy of this book and a pencil to mark the traits in the page that we are going to mention. Before we go to our first character today, let us understand what characterization is and how we give the characters their traits. And characterization, this is whereby we give the characters in a story that is a play or a novel their traits or attributes. And to do this, we use adjectives most of the time. And there are uh, three ways of characterization. And the first one, what you're supposed to do is look at what the author says about the certain character. Number two, look what the character does, his or her action. And number three, look what other characters says about one or a certain characters and by doing those three ways you'll be able to give the characters in any story their traits and now we are going to start with our first character and that is nora so in the book nora she is the wife to helma or toval helma and the mother of three that is Amy, Bob, and Ifar. And she is the protagonist or the main character, or in other words, the good guy in our story. And the first trait of Nora's is that she is generous. On, on your book on page one, Nora asks the potter to keep a chain, and it is this one. There is a shilling, no, keep the chain. Number two, she is a child, and she is acting like a child. That is on page two whereby she hides the macarons in her pocket and eats the macaron when the husband is not there. When, when she calls the husband to come, she hides the, the, the macarons in the pocket again and wipes her mouth, just like a little kid will do when they are doing something that is not right. So look at page 2, the stage direction, and you'll see the treat there. So the next one, she is a, a spendthrift. And a spendthrift is a person who wastes money. We learn this from Helma, whereby she was her a spendthrift. Let us go to page two in the middle. All these things has my little spendthrift been wasting money again? So that shows that she is a spendthrift. Number three, she is selfless. That is on page four. And a selfless person is the one who cares more about the needs of others more than they care about their own needs. And this is seen on Christmas uh, Christmas Day, whereby she bought gifts for all her kids and the maids and bought nothing for her. So let us go on page four in the middle. Check whereby Nora is saying, here is a new suit for Ivar, a sword and a horse and a trumpet. And there is also dress length and handkerchiefs for the maids. And in that case, we see that she bought nothing for herself. Next point, she is extravagant on page 4. And we learned this from Helma. And Helma calls Nora extravagant little person. So on page 4 again, almost the last line. Very well. But now tell me you extravagant little person. So from Helma, we can say that Nora is extravagant. The next trait is that she is hardworking and in the last Christmas, that is on page 7 to 8, she shut herself in the, in the room long until after midnight preparing ornament for the Christmas tree. So let us go to page 7, down there, the last part where, whereby Helma is saying, do you remember last Christmas, for full three weeks beforehand, you shut yourself up every evening until long after midnight, making ornament for Christmas tree. So note that down using your pencil. Again on page 12, Nora is hardworking and she did a lot of work, that is needlework, crochet work and embroidery. So page 12 there, almost in the middle, check where Nora is saying, Yes, odds and ends, 
needlework, crochet work, embroidery, and that kind of things, and other things as well. Selfless on page 13, and Nora had to sacrifice going to nurse her sick father in order to take care of her husband. And at the same time, she was pregnant. So on page 13, in the middle, right saying, yes, and that, uh, and just think of it, uh, I couldn't go and nurse him. I was expecting little Ivar's birth every day, and I had my poor sick Toval to look after. My dear kind father, I never saw him again, Christine. That was the saddest day I have known since our marriage. So she is a selfless person. And again on page 16, she is kind. And this is whereby she offered to talk to her husband in order to get Mrs. Lynn a job. So check there, page 16, we are there. At the top, he must Christine. Just leave it for me. I will brought the subject in uh, very cleverly. I will think of something that will please him very much. It will make me happy to be of some use to you. So on the next trait of Nora's is that she is brave. On page 18, she goes against the society's norm and borrows money in order to, to help her sick husband. And from Mrs. Lynn, we learn that no woman is allowed to borrow money without uh, the husband's permission. So check page 18 in the middle. Mrs. Lynn is saying, no wife can, uh, no, a wife cannot borrow without her husband's consent. So by doing that, Nora was brave. And next, she is secretive. That is on page 20. When you read the whole of page 20, you see that she kept the secret of borrowing the money from Crockstad to her. She did not tell her husband, she, Mrs. Lynn, as Nara. Since then, you have, you have never told the secret to your husband. So on that note, we can say Nora is a secretive. Next, she is a responsible person that is on page 21. So she had to make sure that she had set a good table for her husband Toval and she could not let her kids to be shabbily dressed. So let us check page 21 at the top. I couldn't let her. Sorry. I have not then been able to put aside much from my housekeeping money. For Toval must have a good table. I couldn't let my children be shabbily dressed. She is a hardworking person and this is on page 21 whereby she says last winter she got a lot of coping job uh, to do and she had to lock herself in the room. So let us check that page 21. The last line. Well then, last winter I was lucky enough to get a lot of coping to do so I locked myself up and started writing every day until quite late midnight. And next. She is rebellious, that is on page 18. This is because she goes against the society's norm, which says that a wife is not allowed to borrow money without consent from the husband. And she goes against that and she, bo uh, she borrows money in order to help her husband. And for that case, we can say she is rebellious. Next, she is playful. Her name is whereby she plays hide and seek with her kids. That is on page uh, 31. You will find that one on page 31. Additionally, she is loving page 30 to 30, 31. She loves her kid. She calls her kid using those beautiful names. That is sweet blessings and darling. Additionally, she stoops and kisses all of them. And the fact that she is ready to sacrifice her time to play with the kids shows that or uh, shows how much she loves her kids. And Nora is fraudulent. That is on page thirty nine to forty. This is because she fold uh, she fold the signature on the bond and the date on the bond and yeah was written with Nora's handwriting. The father died on twenty ninth of September, but the bond was dated second October. She is loving or caring. That is on page forty, whereby she tells uh, no, she tells Crookside she couldn't have given up their trip abroad because she was saving 
her husband's life. Jake at the middle, Nora saying, no, that was impossible. That a trip was to save my husband's life. I couldn't give that up. So that proves that she has got love for her husband. Again on page 43, she loves her husband and she says she could anything, she could do anything or everything she thinks of to please her husband. Uh, page 43 up there. I will do everything I can think of to please you, Toval. I will sing for you, dance for you. And also on the same note, page 43, we can say she is deceitful because uh, she lies to Helma that there was no one in the home. But you know that Krogstad was there. Character is Nils Krogstad and some few things about him. He is a lawyer, number one. And number two, he is an ex fiance to Mrs. Lynn. And one trait about him, the first one, he is inquisitive. That is on page 32 to 33. Whereby, an inquisitive person, sorry, is the one who asks a lot of questions. And on that page, he asks a lot of questions about Mrs. Lynn. Page 33, may, she, he's saying, may I make so bold to ask a uh, if it was a Mrs. Lynn, just arrived in town and some sort of questions. So he is inquisitive. He is determined and he is determined to keep her his small post in the bank. And he say he'll fight for he'll fight for that post as if he was fighting for his own life. That is page 35. Let us take that together. In the middle, listen to me, Miss Mrs. Helma. If necessary, I'm prepared to fight for my small post in the bank as if I was fighting for my life. So it's manipulative that is on page 38 to page 41. And he manipulates Nora to use her influence on her husband in order to retain his post in the bank. And he threatens to reveal Nora's secret if she does not use her influence. It's revengeful, that is page 41. And he threatens Nora if she does not use her influence to convince her husband not to fire him, he's gonna reveal her secret of borrowing the money. Check page 41 at the last, uh, the last part where Krog said, but let me tell you, if I lose my position, Mm -hmm. If I lose my position for a second time, you shall use, lose yours with mine. Next, he is immoral, that he is on page 47, whereby Helma says that Nils has lost his moral character because he had been poisoning his children with lies and dissimulation. Page 47, uh, at the bottom, this crocodile now has been persistently poisoning his own children with lies and dissimulation that is why i say he has lost all moral character so in that case we can say he is immoral and next is an he is an extortionist and this is a person who uses threats uh, violence or force in order to get what they want and um, Krogstad is threatening nora if she does not use her influence on her husband he is going to reveal her secret of borrowing the money so in that case, we'll say that he is an extortionist. So that is all about Nils Krogstad. But if you have any other trait of Krogstad in chapter one, just let me know. In this case, we are moving to the last character. And this is Dr. Rank. I have one and one trait of Dr. Rank and he is in this one. That is on page 25. This is because he talks about Krogstad uh, in, uh, in a very unpleasant manner. And on page 25, he's saying, a lawyer of the name of Krogstad, a fellow you don't know at all, he suffers, he suffers from a deceased moral character, this is Helma, but even he began talking of it as being highly important, I should. And in that case, you can say that Nils is immoral because Dr. Ram said so. So that is the end of our lesson today. And thank you for watching and in case you have any other traits that I have left in Act 1, just let me know. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Be happy always and bye-bye.